fellow nerds, we got a, I don't want to say final trailer because it seems like the movie is so far away, but we got a second trailer for the Marvels. And for those of you who watched our little breakdown of the first, we were not impressed. I think they did a little better job on this one. But, you know, we can definitely talk about that before we go into. I mean, I was pretty, I love Captain Marvel. I think Miss Marvel is great here. I'm a big Spectrum fan in the comics. And that first trailer took my hype level from a pretty decent level down pretty far. So we'll see what this one does, you know, for it. But I definitely think this one did a better job. But are you ready there, Sir Douglas? Yes, I am. And yeah, I have to agree with you. Uh, I was in the same boat as you. Saw that first trailer and I was like, oh, no, I am not looking forward to this movie. But yeah, this one, marginally better. So let's take a look. Let's start this over. I had Gerald my life. Danvers, prodigal child of the Milky Way. Nick Fury. My favorite one-eyed man of intrigue. How goes it out there? Uh, you know, cold, no air. I love that the she calls him, how's my one-eyed man of intrigue going? And, you know, they got this nice little banner. Obviously, they've probably, you know, they've known each other for a very long time. We don't know how much they've actually stayed in contact, but they've definitely known each other for quite some time. So it's good to see the banter. I love it. Space. We get, we see somebody floating in space there, and it does look like Carol Danvers to me, but it could be maybe Ben Dar too. They actually kind of have the same sort of hair in here, so it's hard to tell, but maybe someone is being saved here by the other, or someone, you know, we know she refers to Carol Danvers as the Annihilator in a little bit, so I wonder if she destroyed her ship and she was lost in space and then was rescued at the same time. So she definitely holds a grudge towards, you know, Captain Marvel. Then we get the uh, nice logo with the Miss Marvel S popping up here. Marvel, the Annihilator. And that's where we get the Captain Marvel, the Annihilator, which I think definitely hints towards a history between the Kree and Captain Marvel. I don't think they left on good terms at the end of the Captain Marvel movie. So I wonder how much more damage she has done to the Kree Empire, you know, by herself. We didn't hear anything about it in Endgame, but I'm sure there's a lot of history out there. So it'll be good to see, you know, what all that is. You took everything from me. And, and we, did, we did hear her say, you took everything from me. So there's obviously a personal history between the two. And we actually see the bangle from Ms. Marvel right here, one of them. We know that in the Ms. Marvel show, uh, Kamala had one, but there was another one out there. So I think the Kree, if they didn't have it all along, they found the other one. And I wonder if that's, you know, what they're gonna use to entangle their light powers here. Now I'm returning the favor. Well, she's returning the favor. Then we see the points of that kind of up in the corner, which entangled their light powers. We get Kamala and Carol switching places right here, which we saw at the end of uh, the Miss Marvel show, kind of the first credit scene. What is happening to me? She has no idea what's going on. She's entangled our light based powers, so we switch places whenever we use them. You know, and there we get the sort of uh, explanation for what's going on. She's entangled their light powers. So every time they use their powers, they switch places, which we saw in the first one. But I think they do a better job of kind of explaining that in this one. Yeah, they, 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 they really did do a much better job actually explaining that because I think in the first trailer they just mentioned it's whenever we use our powers and in the first trailer didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Now I'm sure they could have been, you know, the discussion around that could have been, well, you know what, we're not going to spoil it for people. We're going to leave it up to them. They're going to see the movie and then they'll find out the, the actual why. But I think showing that part in the trailer, showing the, like the main crux of the movie being that they constantly switch places whenever they use their powers, that was confusing people. And I am glad that they explained it's because they all have light-based powers, and they're all intertangled. 
And I was like, oh, okay, that's... It's still in the realm of, like, comic book wizardry, but, like, it makes more sense. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, and we saw the bangle from Miss Marvel. We yeah, don't know if yeah. that's the second one that was lost, and they're somehow using that. It looked like it. I had to, I have to guess that it's probably the second one. Oh, yeah. You can absorb light. Yes, you can absorb light. I can see it. And she Kamala. Can see Who's it. Kamala? Hi. She can turn light into physical matter. Which, which I that's have kind never of a bad heard explanation of. of I could totally show you. No! That she can just see it? Because I feel like she can do more than that. <laughs> no, she definitely can. I mean, but maybe I was thinking about that. Maybe it's something where she hasn't learned the extent of her powers yet. Mm. because we do see later on she's like stuck in a triangle or she's powering up the triangle but obviously in the comics you know <laughs> spectrum photon whatever they're going to call her she can uh -huh. turn into any form of energy oh nice so she can travel at the speed of light but i'm thinking maybe they're going to let her grow into that power and we not see her you know fully powered up here because yeah she can do a lot more than see light if that's all the you power can... they're going to give her you know what's going to happen right what? We march at dawn. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm waiting. Uh, I'm waiting for them to incorporate the she can travel the speed of light and be like, oh, so she can just do a holdo hold mo maneuver then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next time we get a a Galactus just bomb. <laughs> he's just like ah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for everybody who is like. <laughs> Uh, because you can't see my body movements, uh, I literally just um, imitated as if, uh, you know, um, a Spectrum was flying through uh, Galactus. Uh, you just, you had to hear my sound effects. <laughs> I was able to see it, and it was fantastic. So, unfortunately, it wasn't recorded. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we can have a channel points thing where people can have you. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> And then we see Carol and Bendar fighting here. And it looks like Carol, she's holding something. And I wonder if they've put a damper on her power somehow. Or if she just took this weapon. Again? Because didn't the Kree do that to her originally? Yeah, they well, they had a power damper on her, yeah. Yeah. So she couldn't reach her full power. But maybe they found a way to do it again. And that's why she's mm. battling with a weapon. Or she just felt like using it. Who knows? Now, I've got a question for you, Keith, because uh, okay. so kind of while we're in the realm of discussing their their powers and everything, and we've talked about this before, I don't know if Marvel slash MCU, if they're going to delve into this, because I know they want to be done with uh, the Infinity Stones and everything. But as we talked about before, Carol Danvers' powers come directly from the Tesseract, right? Like, it, it the, the, uh, the engine blew and gave her basically Infinity Stone powers. And as far as I can tell, that's the same thing with Photon slash Spectrum, whatever they're going to call her, is that she uh, interacted with Wanda's um, Infinity Stone-based powers slash witch powers. I, I don't really know whatever, Chaos uh, magic whatever slash that was. <laughs> that's kind Stone, of nebulous. Yes. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm assuming that they... They both have powers that derive from Infinity Stones. That would be my guess. I don't think Do you wrong. think the Bangles also were imbued with an Infinity Stone, or do you think they're not even going to dive into that territory? I think I think you're right. I think they are going to be, you know, just like uh, Shang Chi's rings. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to find out that they were imbued with power from one of the Infinity Stones. Because even though they're destroyed now, it doesn't mean their power doesn't last. Because obviously right. they were destroyed. Captain Marvel still has her powers and Wanda mm -hmm. still has her powers. So I think we are going to find out. And I think both the bangles from Miss Marvel in this movie and mm -hmm. Shang-Chi's rings are going to play a much bigger part in the multiverse. Maybe there's something that Kang is coming after because he understands oh. the power they hold. But I think I think you're definitely on to something. All right. I think they did a better job of showing some action scenes here. We got a yes. bunch of Carol flying around, blowing up ships, you know, flying right through them and basically destroying them, showing, you know, she's an Omega-level power. 
She's not mm -hmm. you know, a street level fighter. She's not Daredevil. Nothing against Daredevil. Love him, but <laughs> he doesn't have that kind of power. And then we even see Kamala. It looks like she might have been training a little bit, you know. She's like sliding and, you know, doing some kicks and using her power. She throws Fury, that gun, right here, and he catches it and starts blasting. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping we, you know, see some good action scenes and it's not just all silliness abound. She's targeting every planet. And then there we got, she's targeting every planet. Call home. Call home, which I don't know who she's talking to there, but obviously <laughs> Kamala, Carol, and uh, Spectrum, all so on Earth. Earth, right? Like, I mean, what other planets do they call home? Well, I wonder if she's talking to other people. I wonder if she was working with someone um, else during those years. And so maybe it's a Nova core person, and, or maybe, mm. you know, maybe it's one of the Guardians. And so she's going after anyone's planet who associated with Captain Marvel in all those years. Now, I don't know because if I you do... already brought this up earlier while, while I was um, uh, gone for a bit. Uh, somebody well, was using on, uh... similar powers to mine and I vanished. But uh, <laughs> um, the, well, I thought uh... you took a conference call with Lucasfilm. <laughs> sure, that too. Uh, when when they showed the woman who uh, was putting on the bangle, she she's a uh, uh, she's Cree, correct? Yes. And that's why she's holding the same kind of uh, hammer weapon. The accuser hammer. Yes. Yeah. OK, yep. that's what I thought. I assumed that that was what they were doing. I, I remember seeing that in the first trailer and that was my assumption, but I didn't I wasn't positive. I would never choose to bring anybody into this. You are not the only thing standing between this and the universe. Yeah, and I like that, you know, Carol Danvers being who her is, like, I wouldn't bring anyone else into this. And, you know, Spectrum's like, you're not the only one standing between this and the universe. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, they teach her, hey, you know, you can be part of a team. We can be the Marvels. I know oh, yeah. yeah. is all for it. But, and I, I was talking about it before you came on, too, you know, when Ben Dar calls Carol the Annihilator. Yeah, probably because she that. blew up an entire ship <laughs> with her yeah, body. <laughs> maybe maybe the ship she was on, and I was, you know, this is when you were uh, reset, restarting your router, but I love it because, you know, in Halo, all of the uh, enemies call Master Chief the demon. Mm -hmm. So it's great that she has a little nickname. I wonder if all the Kree right. is going to refer to her as the Annihilator. Oh, like, I wonder, are we going to see maybe the MCU version of... Uh, Carol Danvers, I wonder if she went on like a war path against like Cree colonizers once she found out like possible. what they were doing to the scroll. I think it's very likely. Like, because we don't really know what she's been up to, say, for like some vague guesses. Like, based on like what she said in Endgame, she mentioned, you know, hey, it's a whole big galaxy and, you know, I'm out there uh, saving everybody else and everything. But like, up until that point, we don't know what she's been doing. She clearly didn't find a homeworld for the scrolls, as we've been discussing in Secret Invasion. So I, I wonder, wonder if, if she's they're just going been to go around blowing stuff up. I wonder if they're going to discuss why she didn't find it. Hint at it, you know, maybe in that. I hope so. And maybe it was the Kree have been expanding so quickly, there's nowhere for them. And she's been trying to push them back, but she is only one person. Right. So that, I wonder if that they're going to be my it. guess. Definitely tie into the, you know, oh God, them calling here. her the Annihilator. Going around with, <laughs> with their, their battleships and everything. <laughs> yeah, and then we, you know, we saw once again, she's kind of blowing through things, taking mm -hmm. things. We see her just levitating here, and I like this little juxtaposition. Ah! You see her, and then Spectrum is in that triangle. It looks like she's powering up here, and I don't okay. know if, if she's being held prisoner in this or if she's powering something up you know, with her powers, because mm -hmm. if they are, if she's not all that familiar with her powers and they're keeping her trapped in a prison like this, that may be where she learns to, you know, she can form into any form of energy and she'll be able to escape. But I don't know. I look at it and I don't see her. It doesn't look like she's being held prisoner. It looks like she's almost powering, you know, channeling energy into it to power something up. Yeah, yeah. Further. Faster. She what? I can't tell. Oh, 
I guess it kind of looks like she is. I couldn't tell from that if she was like literally inside some sort of like pyramid thing. Yeah, it look, it's you can only see a little bit of it on the screen. But yeah. yeah, it definitely looks like a pyramid. Then we get the higher, further, faster mantra mm -hmm. from all. The and then we see that going to fight uh, Bendar here. Once again, you know, we see Spectrum shooting a laser. We see Carol once again with a weapon. I can't tell if it's the accuser hammer or not. But it may well be, because in the comics, she was an accuser for a time. Oh. So it'll be interesting to see if she has some familiarity with that weapon and maybe using it against Bendar, who we don't even know if she's an actual accuser for the Kree well, or if she's true. gone rogue a lot like Ronan in the first Guardians movie. Mm -hmm. They seem to have a lot of that. They can't keep their people in check. Come on, Kree. <laughs> but at the same time, if you remember from Guardians, the Kree didn't seem to really care either. No, they didn't. <laughs> He's like, uh, talk to the hand. That sounds like a you problem. <laughs> we signed your peace treaty. You deal with him. Right. Like, what are you? It's your guy. Who's <laughs> <laughs> a good kid, Gus? Yeah. Can you? I got it. I love that. This too. this part was funny. Uh, I'm sorry. It was it was funny to me. I know other no, people are gonna it say it was cringy, but her just like, oh my god, this cat literally just ate these people in front of me. That that would freak anybody out, and uh, that was hilarious. I I did crack up laughing when I saw that in the trailer earlier. And, and I like that you know Nick Fury's like, oh goose, good kitty, you're a good kitty, and then right. you see he it is just not a kitty. <laughs> no. <laughs> And then we even get, you know, Spectrum's like, I can't. And Carol's like, I got it. <laughs> I wonder what they're actually, if Kamala's gotten herself into some sort of trouble. And they're oh, just like, okay, probably. who's taking care of the rookie this time? Mm -hmm. But overall, I think they did a much better job with this. You know, it's still not, my hype level's not off the charts, but at least now I'm not uh, dreading seeing it. You know, we might actually get some good stuff out of it. So should I or should I not get a popcorn bucket? Please don't. <laughs> My precious. Oh, Quantum Met You. <laughs> Even though I still enjoy Quantum Mania. You know, it, it's so much negativity on the internet. I won't understand it. But a lot of people are just anti MCU at this point for Yeah. I mean, I've gone back and I've rewatched it. I like it. Um it is uh it's different for an Ant Man movie, I'll give it that. Like, you know, it's not the same it's not the exact same like heist setup that they normally do. But, you know, it was still pretty good. I think most people were mad that they they said that, you know, for this next phase of the MCU, that Kang is going to be the biggest bad, and he's supposed to be, like, this phase is, um, you know, uh, oh my gosh. The bad guy, the purple guy from the last phase that my brain won't let me remember right now. You know, Infinity Thanos. Stone Man. Thanos. Thank yeah, you. Thanos. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just like, what the hell? Why am I? My brain would not remember the name. I, I'm telling you, my my, uh, my memory is just a whole bunch of file cabinets. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people were upset that they introduced Kang in in the in an Ant Man movie, and previously in uh, uh, in previous phases, the Ant Man movies were always kind of throwaway. Like you didn't need to see them to, uh, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of the phases. Like, they, they were skippable. Uh, you, you comprehended who the Ant-Man character was, and a, a lot of the other characters in them didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Like, as long as you knew that, hey, there's this dude that can shrink, and then he explained that he could use his powers for time travel in, uh, in Endgame. And th that was about all you needed. So I think most people, from what I understand, and I could be way off, you know, with the way the internet works. But from what I understand, people were upset that you're going to take the biggest bad from this phase and you're going to put him in an Ant-Man movie. And then he's going to get beat by Ant-Man. 
but they explained he was without his armor. And Thank you. Else, you know, uh, yes, like you and said. we said this. We said this in our uh, in our full spoiler review. Shameless plug. Please go check that out. We actually go through all of this. If you um, are still on the fence about this movie, or you saw this movie, and you uh, you know maybe you have some um, some non uh, silver lining feelings that maybe Keith can help uh, fix please go watch our video. We do actually break it down and we explain some of the choices that, and why we think they were made. And uh, yeah, we give our honest review. Like, trust me, we are not shills for Marvel or the MCU or anything like that. We will say when a movie is bad. In fact, like that's why we're talking about the Marvels. It wasn't super exciting to us at first. And to kind of get us back on track with, uh, with that, um, I will say that uh, I agree with you that this, uh, this trailer did look a little bit better. But I'm concerned again about the uh, about how certain things look. I I guess I personally expected um, Kamala's powers to look better in a movie than they did on TV. No, you're not but wrong. I I mean that's just my opinion. I just I I feel like they took a TV character. And they plopped her into a movie world, and they did not update anything about her, other than maybe her her costume. Now, do you think that maybe as she gets a little more training with her powers, it's going to look better? Maybe. Or do you think I don't know. Just, because I keep thinking, I'm with you. I'm like, okay. It looks so cartoony look compared to the other two. It does. And I'm hoping they kind of, because, you know, they killed off Miss Marvel in the comics so they can bring her back as a mutant. And mm -hmm. having light-based powers instead of, you know, <laughs> stretchy. But, you know, <laughs> right. I'm hoping it does look a little better. I'm hoping we see, you know, her going all out with her powers. And there's a few rumors going around. No nothing about Kamala. Mm -hmm. The reason I bring it up, there is a rumor, my my time to shine hello, uh, one of the scoopers who does a, she does a really good job with a lot of her scoops, says that Carol is going to basically assume that binary. And if you're familiar oh. with that, that's when she basically is almost full <clears throat> energy. She looks, she has like a red face and fire hair. She's like completely just fully powered up. So she's like Phoenix. Called, well, not Phoenix, <laughs> but kind of, you know, she's, she's definitely approaching levels of power that should not be wielded by mere mortals. Mm -hmm. But if that's the case with her, I wonder if we're going to see something with Kamala and uh, Spectrum doing the same thing. Well, considering Carol doesn't really seem to be aging, is it safe to say she's not really even immortal anymore? No, true. True. I just <laughs> her 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 body was mere mortal at one point, but you're right. Yeah, she's it's been 30 some years and she looks the same as she did the before, same. so <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting to see there's one other uh, rumor going about about the post credit scene for this movie. Okay. Now, since we're here, if you're watching and you don't want to know, and we don't know if this is accurate or not, but the rumor of one of the post credit scenes is that Kamala is going to reach out to Kate Bishop. So... Okay. H Haley Stanfield is going to be in the post credit scene with Kamala basically reaching out to her to kind of form a team. So they're going to start to... For maybe the Young Avengers? Yep. Or okay. the Champions, whatever they're going to call each other. And I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, because I thought Haley was tremendous as Kate Bishop. Yes. So she hasn't been in anything since Hawkeye. We definitely need to see her some more. I so love I hope the that's Hawkeye true. series. It was so good. It was really good. Especially their end credit scene. My favorite. <laughs> I told you the story when I was watching it with my wife the second time. And mm -hmm. we're on the last episode, and I remember I'm like, God, why can't I remember what the post credit scene is for this? I'm like, I know there is one. <laughs> and then, like, right before it starts, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, this. <laughs> <laughs> why? Uh, I, I have a uh, I have a theory palooza for this movie. It's a, real, it's oh, a big nice. one. I okay, like you it. ready for this? Mm -hmm. Carol Danvers is going to come back to Earth. And the Air Force is going to seek her out and demand that uh, she fulfill the rest of her contract. Actually, 
being in the military. Yes, that's probably <laughs> true. And she's going to get extra duty. And so we're just going to see like an entire 45 minutes of the movie of Carol Danvers raking dirt, throwing away garbage, standing guard in a hallway. That would be fantastic. <laughs> that would be a great post credit scene to that movie. She's like, like cleaning uh, the train. Miss Danvers, um, you uh, you signed a contract saying that you would uh, you know, you'd be in the Air Force for like four years. Yeah, we have you down for two. <laughs> oh, and you've been calling yourself captain? Oh, mm. I don't think so. <laughs> Listen here, Lieutenant. <laughs> And don't forget to hit us up at Twitter, leave a comment down below, and we will see you next time on Not Your Status Quo.